cats. Who doesn't love cats? I love cats. I'm sure you love cats. Like, and, and also, oh, wait, 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 no, 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 not that one, not that one. But you know what's just as good as a cute and adorable cat? A cozy video game about cats. You know those video games where you look at it and you say, ah, pff, it's a silly, cheap indie game. I bought it at a discount. Probably play for about 20 minutes before I'm done with it and I'll never open it. Wait, is that the sun? Cat Tales is a cute, casual, open world cat simulator RPG. That's a mouthful. But honestly, I was caught off guard on just how much I'd enjoy this title. I enjoy RPGs, but sometimes the push and commitment to get into one can feel incredibly overwhelming sometimes. Farming and life simulators like Stardew Valley are also pretty relaxing, but if you're like me, you're always stressing out and trying to get everything done before a deadline and feel real world time slipping by you, it can be a lot. Cat Tales is a charming blend of both genres, but kept at a more simplistic level and very beginner friendly. The game has been noted to be compared to the Warrior Cats series. Uh, I was never a Warrior Cats person. That was honestly more my sister's thing back in the day. Besides befriending the other cats, you can also claim their land and take it for your own. I'm gonna spill blood of thousands in the name of the Mountain Clan! The music was also really soothing and catchy to listen to, and it kept me engaged for hours. So, with all that adorable and violent stuff out of the way, what exactly is Cat Tales? Cat Tales was created and self-published by Falcon Development a husband and wife team, Tyler and Rebecca Thompson. Tyler was the lead developer and artist to Cat Tales, while Rebecca worked on the marketing coordination as well as the game's social media pages, as well as providing the game with some additional dialogue. Previously, Falcon Development worked on the mobile games Pixel Penguin in 2014 and Knights of Aria in 2015. Cat Tales inspirations come from Harvest Moon, Friends of Mineral Town, and Harvest Moon 64. Another source of inspiration stems from the Warriors novels by the pseudonym Aaron Hunter. Tyler also created a fan-made game, Warriors The Untold Tales, which is a precursor to Cat Tales, and was fairly popular within the Warrior Cats community. Cat Tales started development in May of 2016, and with the concept of the game three years prior. In April 2017, they launched a Kickstarter, hoping to receive $3,210 for their goal, and were able to obtain it within six hours. By the end of the Kickstarter, they reached $38,311 nearly 12 times their initial funding goal, and reached multiple stretch goals. Through the help of the Kickstarter funding, the two were able to contract Haru Parwanda, Jenna Brown, and Sarah Anderson for concept artwork, and Termon Garvin to compose the soundtrack to Cat Tales. Cat Tales released on December 1st, 2017 on Steam and on Nintendo Switch on November 29th, 2018. The game has received positive reception from viewer publications such as IGN, Kotaku, and Nintendo Life noting the calming and silliness of the game, with comparisons to Stardew Valley. Cat Tales also received the Spark Tank 2017 winner, a business plan competition held in Marion, Indiana on January 28, 2017. Cat Tales also has an overwhelmingly positive score on Steam. According to their Kickstarter, the game has sold over 10,000 copies nine months after its release. Halfway through the production of my review video, I was given the chance to interview both Tyler and Becca about the production of Cat Tales and how it became to be. It was a great time, and I definitely recommend you check it out after this video. Cattail starts off with a slideshow cutscene of you being adopted at a pet store by a little girl. Time passes by of your cat and this girl bonding and spending time together, playing with one another, only for her mother to get angry and- Jeez, what, what, what did I do to be abandoned like this? No, don't do this. That's- no. This- this mom gets the award for the biggest scumbag of the year. After the intro, you then pick your cat's color and name. I named my cat, Daryl. I shouldn't be allowed to name living creatures. You're then introduced to Coco, and they guide you about the survival and combat aspects to Cat Tales. Afterwards, they tell you to join one of the three clans, the Forest Colony, led by the cat Mare, the Mountain Colony by Leo, and the Mystic Colony by Alisa. These three factions are all fighting and killing one another and it's up to you to decide which one sounds most appealing to you. I went with the Mountain Clan for my playthrough. The, uh, the location just sounded really nice, and Leo is pretty cool. I couldn't imagine he would ever be angry at me. He's a very cool cat. After the introduction, Coco magically teleports away, and you are now free to roam and explore to your heart's content. There are multiple things you can do. Each day, there's a requested job on the bulletin board. 
These tasks can range from fighting in territorial battles, hunting animals, picking plants, visiting other colonies, mining, exploring around, and giving gifts. Completing these tasks will reward the player with items and task board currency. These tasks are optional, but they must be done before midnight of that corresponding day. Defeating enemies, hunting animals, picking plants, and sleeping will reward the player with XP, which they can use to increase their hunting, fighting, swimming, and foraging skills, as well as equipping certain unique skills with cooldown timers. Hunting is where I sunk all my points into first. Hunting is really satisfying and addictive to do. Depending on your skill level, you'll have a higher chance of killing your prey. These animals can be used as food. In cattails, you have two meters to look out for, your health and hunger. You come across small animals such as mice and squirrels pretty often. Stopping for a second to earn XP and gain a snack is such a rewarding experience. You can also kill little bugs, which can be sold or given to as gifts. Speaking of killing, combat is kind of finicky and it's not perfect. I didn't focus on upgrading my fighting skills till I got close to the end game. You only have a small hitbox when attacking other cats, so each time you do attack, you're almost guaranteed to get attacked as well. In order to fight properly, you have to attack and then run back as soon as the animation ends and rinse and repeat until they're dead. There are a few additional skills that can be used for combat, however due to the cooldown timers, these aren't really too helpful. At level 1, your attacks hardly do anything, and this is what turned me away from fighting for the longest time. But at level 10, you are a god, destroying anything that dares walk in your path. Nothing can stop you, you can even kill ghosts. Again, there are three types of enemies in cattails. Cats, bats, and ghosts. Unfortunately though, they don't really offer much in terms of variety or having any kind of different attack behaviors. Twice a day, there is a territory battle where you and your rival colony will fight one another. Entering the area will spawn cats on both sides. Honestly, I spent a lot of this game just letting my allies do all the heavy lifting in battles. If your allies die, you can simply exploit the game by leaving and returning, and thus resetting the battle. There's more to cattails than just fighting, however combat is honestly the weakest element in this game, and I think it really could have been refined more. Personally, I still found enjoyment out of it though. This is a me specific thing here, but back in the day I used to play this fan made Pokemon Mystery Dungeon MMO, PM Universe, where the combat was mostly just spam attack buttons to kill the enemies, and Cattails really gave me this sense of nostalgia about it. That doesn't excuse the game from criticism though. Also, I'm very surprised that this is actually still up. It's been like 9 years since I last checked this. Fighting isn't optional and it is required in order to clear the main quest of this game, and I really do wish it was a little bit more engaging and complex. Some suggestions would be to add knockback to enemies and the player, a wider invisible hitbox, and allowing the player to sprint at any time but at the cost of their hunger, as well as a bit of enemy variety. I think these would be enough to make the fighting more engaging, but still keep the game simple and player friendly. Dying in Cattails gives the option to exit and return to their last save, or to resume back in your town at the expense of losing all of your items. Upgrading the swimming skill can make your cat withstand swimming longer and faster, and I learned the hard way on why cats hate water. Some water tiles will be going in a direction, making it harder to navigate. Once your meter runs out, you'll quickly start to lose HP every second. While the other skills are more essential, adding enough points to swimming makes traversing a thousand times easier. Forging, like hunting, is also really satisfying and one of my favorite aspects to cattails. I spent a lot of time just mindlessly picking up any plants I came across as I walked to my destinations. There are plants that restore your HP and belly, and there are also plants that boost your attack and speed. Finding lavenders are a source of dopamine for me, and I'll explain why shortly. There is also catnip, which can make your cat completely trip out. Catnip is also a very valuable tradable item, so congrats, you're a drug dealer in a cat game. You can also upgrade your HP by finding power paws. These are really well hidden throughout the map but these can also be found on the 50th floor of caves, as well as being bought during festivals. After your first day, Coco will show you the sacred temple, and will inform you about the missing forest guardian, and ask you to assist on bringing the spirit back. This is your primary objective in Cattails. Much like Stardew Valley's community center, you'll need to bring various items to each of the six pillars. After you complete the first one, you can complete these and drop off your items at any order or at any time you wish. Each colony has a few claimed titles at the beginning of the game, you also have a reputation meter between all three, with the one you align with always at 
You can take over the other clan's squares by killing any of their roaming cats or using lavenders while on that section's tile. Twice a day there will be territory battles which will significantly improve your renown for that square if you manage to defeat the neighboring cats. I know I just dogged on the whole fighting mechanics a moment ago, but there is something that's just really satisfying and really addictive about painting the whole map in your color. If you roam around the territories owned by the other colonies, sometimes you'll get attacked randomly by that clan's cats. I like that they all have names too, which is really cute to see before they all just die. You can increase your reputation of other colonies by giving that colony's guard gifts. At 25% reputation, you can access that colony's village, and at 50%, you can use their shops and clinic. It's also required that you have a high enough reputation for the other two colonies in order to finish the main quest of the game. The evil bastard in me really wishes I could just dethrone them and claim the land for myself. The Mountain Clan doesn't play! However, your reputation with these colonies will start to decrease if you don't visit often and bring them gifts. But killing their cats is totally fine! If your reputation is high enough, you're given the option to switch over to that clan instead. However, at the cost of your betrayal, your previous clan's reputation drops to zero and you're prohibited from entering. Each cat has a schedule that they attend to. Mostly it's just sticking around their respected village, but they do go to bed at night. One of the things that stresses me out when playing games like Stardew and Harvest Moon is suffering the consequences when staying up way too late in game. However, with cattails, you can stay up as long as you want to you can still run around and get things done at 3 in the morning. Finally, a video game that relates to my life! Sleeping after 12 hours will give the player 5 XP, and waking up in the morning will give the player more time to complete tasks on the task board, as well as interact with the other cats. The player's bed can also be used to save their game. Also like Stardew, the game also goes over the four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Each season lasts for 10 in-game days, with each season providing different plants, insects, weather, and environment music. Also, the winter just kind of sucks. There isn't much vegetation and prey is hardly abundant. Um, I mean, it's accurate, but it sucks. On second thought, all the evil water has frozen over and you can spin on it. Never mind, winter is the best season. Bite me. At the end of each season, a festival is held at the Sacred Temple, where each of the three clans hang out and mingle. Talking to Coco will allow the player to participate in that season's games. The Flower Frenzy, the Turtle Races, pumpkin carving, and snowball fight. These are fun little distraction minigames with three rounds per festival. You're awarded festival tokens based on your performance. Real talk, can you imagine like three mafia kingpins just like putting aside their brutal practices for a single day and just like break out the board game of life and just have a great time palling around? After a long, fun, and eventful day of celebration, peace, and unity, we all go back home and get back to killing each other the next day. You can befriend all the cats within and outside of your clan. You can increase your friendship with each cat by giving them three gifts a day, with rare items having more significant impact. Four and five star cats will also start to give you gifts as well, and the town shops and doctor cats will start to offer you discounts. You ever look at a cat and just say, uh, yeah, that's the one. After the first season, Coco will inform the player that they can date a cat if their friendship is high enough by giving them a rose. For my playthrough, I decided I wanted to be with Delta. I like that they're purple and black, they're friendly, and they like to pull pranks. They're cute. But... They told me no. Apparently cats that have a heart icon on the bottom right are marriageable, and the ones with shields are not. Heartbroken. I did what any sane cat would do. And I just gave it to Robin right next to him instead. You can also live out the totally player tomcat of your dreams, and you can date as many cats as you want to, if that's your thing. But when you truly find the one, and when your relationship is ready to go to the next level, you can marry the cat that stole your heart. And any cats you are dating will also hate you. One nitpick though, I wish that the relationship meter looked similar to the friendship one, I wasn't fully aware of what cat was dateable, and I didn't know about the whole heart color meter thing until I looked at the wiki. But one detail I do really appreciate though, is that all the cats, including your own, aren't referred to by genders, so it leaves it up to your own interpretation on your romance options. If you married a cat, your partner now lives in the den with you. They don't offer too much, but they say some really cute stuff to you, and they give you items sometimes, so it's really sweet. Thank you, Robin. I appreciate this. You can expand and customize your den, and you can even build a nursery. At a random time, your partner will ask you if you want to have kittens. It took me about 
10 in-game days for Robin to ask me about this, which you can choose whether or not you want any. You can have up to one to four kittens, depending on how many items you give your partner. It took me about another 10 in-game days for them to be born, and I managed to get four of them. I named them Tuk Tuk, Olive, Chip, and my favorite, Terrence. It takes about another 10 in-game days till you can actually talk with them, and another few days till they're actually able to walk around and eventually follow you around. You can only take one kitten with you at a time, however they'll help you with fighting enemies, hunting animals, and foraging plants for you. Each cat also has their own personality types. Some are loud, while others are more reserved. You can also level up your kitten's skills by having them participate in fights, hunting, and foraging. If your kitten runs out of HP, they will die. Start. I don't feel so good. Okay, I can't. They actually just go back to your den. Total disclaimer though, if you want to have kittens, marry a cat as soon as possible. I waited till post game and it took almost a whole in-game year and by that point I was mentally clocking out of the game. I mostly just did this part just to get my input on it. Also if you're feeling a special kind of evil, you can give your partner a black rose and break up with them. Sorry honey, but it's not working out and I think we should be seeing other cats. Also I'm keeping the kids. Understandably, your friendship drops to zero with your partner and they do not want to speak to you. But hey, at least Robin is considerate enough to know that I'm still starving. Again, like Stardew, that's a recurring theme in this video, you can also mine underground. There are 100 randomly generated floors to go through, finding as many gems and ore you can before you either starve or run out of HP. You'll also find bats in these caverns, which will be a real threat if your fighting power is low or if you're running out of health. The gems can also be used as gifts, sold in stores, or given to moles in exchange for mole currency. Speaking of currency, there are four different types. Mew, the yellow and standard form of money. This can be used at any of the cat shops or used to expand your den. Green task tokens can be used to purchase rarer items from the task board. Red festival tokens are also used to purchase rare items, but you can only spend these once during each festival. And blue mole cash can only be spent by talking to the moles. Each shop contains edible items, unlockable customizable color palettes, and costumes, as well as some unique skills. Typically in RPGs, I usually save up and find money pretty easily, and in some games I end up with more than I know what to do with. Besides selling items, you only gain Mew currency by killing other enemies. I never felt this financial sense of empowerment when playing Cattails, which made purchasing items a thing I'd only do sparingly. Which I think is a cool and interesting take on the norm of RPG currency systems. However, this preempted me from purchasing cosmetics and unnecessary items. Though towards the end, I did sink all my profits into just lavenders. They're so good. Once you give the shrine all the required items, an underground cavern will open somewhere on the world map, and you have to go retrieve a colored gem. These caverns can provide the player with a puzzle to complete. While simple in nature, these actually really made me think for a while or a swarm of bats to destroy, which honestly the first time I tried to fight them I got bodied and I learned that my fighting skills are actually pretty important. After the player has completed the main quest and restored all six shrines, the forest guardian is restored and grants the player the option to start their own colony, which now adds a fourth fraction to the game. You can choose where your new colony starts. Unlike joining the other colonies, your previous colony's reputation is cut down to only 50% thus giving the player even more to do and reclaim their former land for their custom colony. You are now a traitor and you have to live the life of guilt of killing your former comrades. Norian law is blunt on the subject of traitors. There is only one punishment. Sentence is death. However, I, I kind of hated that all of my hard work of turning the map blue was now wasted and I'd have to go reclaim everything again. After looking it up, this post game content was actually one of Cattail's Kickstarter stretch goals and was added in months after the game's release. And yet, there's still so much more you can do. You can continue to expand your colony and receive new residents by buying houses, or you can explore and find hidden secrets around the map. There's a few developer cheat codes to mess around with. 
cat colors, outfits and decorations to buy, mines to explore, friends to make, tasks to complete, festivals to compete. There's a lot of content and things you can do in Cattails. And I honestly did not expect to be spending as much time as I did with this game. The only thing that this cat simulator is missing is being able to knock glasses off the tables. Typically, when it comes to post-game content, that's when I usually drop off from a game. But I continued playing, primarily to see everything that Cattails had to offer for this video review, and honestly, it felt pretty therapeutic. However, it wasn't until when I forced myself to play did I feel some of the repetitiveness to Cattails sink its claws into me. This was primarily due to me waiting forever for my kittens to be born. I still had a fun time reclaiming the tiles and buying tons of lavender to do so. I even took over the entire map. I also had fun exploring all the caves and building my own colony, as well as befriending the other cats. That said though, Cattails is a game to get immersed in, relaxed to, and to go at your own pace. Forcing yourself to play will hamper your experience. Cattails has a nice simplistic pixel art aesthetic. I found the realistic cats, but with the unrealistic mouths, eyes, and colors to be very silly and adorable, and I really couldn't help but smile every time they made new faces at me. After interacting with each cat enough times, they all started to pop out from one another, and they all have fun and character-specific dialogue and traits. There are some gripes I have with the visuals though, such as the sprites of the dead animals, fish, and bugs. In the inventory, they're all kind of hard to see, and they're all similar looking, making it very confusing to know which item is which at times. The UI overall, and say it with me now, reminded me of Stardew Valley. I think the interface is very organized and easy to understand, however I did find the text to be hard to read at times. I also wasn't sure what these icons in the corner over here meant, but I'm going to assume that's the items, XP, and options menu. I like the tiles that's used for each of the area's locations. Again, back to the Mystery Dungeon MMO for a moment, which reused the tile sets of the actual games. Cattails' visuals really reminded me of the open world nature of just going around, checking out the hub area, and having this sense of freedom. I also really applaud the visual environment weather effects, such as the cloud shadows, leaves, petals, and plants blowing in the wind. These little details help make the game more immersive and calming. Fun fact, Tyler did all the visuals by mouse, which I found very impressive. The animations in the game are kinda okay, the movements remind me of something out of an RPG maker. I don't think I have too much to say, but it totally gets the job done. As I stated earlier, I do wish that the combat attack animations had more oomph to them. The scratch attacks are really small, and they don't really align with the actual hitboxes. I do like the minuscule detail of the cat portrait shaken back and forth when talking. It helps makes the conversations feel more fun and playful. The particle effects are also really pleasant to look at. Now, there is a good reason why 55% of this game's budget went to the game's music. Because it is phenomenal. Each season has three variant tracks that will alternate depending on the weather, and I can't express how much the soundtrack really kept me engaged with the world's environments. All the overworld tracks have this peaceful, playful, and whimsical feel to it. Like, listening to the songs out of context just screams, CAT GAME! I typically listen to the OSTs of whatever game I'm covering on this channel while I work, and these tracks just, they never got old. I purchased the soundtrack on Steam, however the soundtrack is also up for free on Cattails' YouTube channel. The sound direction is also really well done. The music stops at night, or when it's raining, or during a snowstorm, and it's just the silence and environmental sounds, bringing a quiet and peaceful immersion into the world. Would I recommend Cattails? Absolutely. I think Cattails is a very cozy game to unwind to at the end of the day and just get immersed in for hours. This game isn't for everyone, obviously. If you're expecting a bigger budget title with complex battle mechanics, character interactions, and decisions with real consequences, then you'll probably be disappointed. To me, the simplicity of Cattails has this smaller budget or almost early build feel to it. I don't mean that to say that it's an unfinished game, because first of all, they reached all of their promised Kickstarter goals. But for example, I spent so many hours playing the alpha build to Minecraft and the early access version to golf with friends back in the day. And while the final products of these games have so much more that you can do, there really was something that was lost and it didn't have the same charm to me. Don't get me wrong, they're still really fun and I can play these games for hours, but they weren't the same quiet and relaxing games I fell in love with. I hope that makes sense. Cattails isn't perfect. Okay, I'm sorry. And it has some glaring flaws. But I walked into this game thinking I'd only play it for about 20 minutes and then stop. And I am so glad that I was wrong. With a variety of things that you can do, 
Cattails kept me addicted for hours and far exceeded my expectations. And to me, those are the type of games that I truly find special. There was a lot of love and passion put into this project, and I think that really gives Cattails character and personality. If you're looking for a small, wholesome experience that still involves murder, then I think Cattails is the game for you. Cattails is available on Steam and Nintendo Switch, and I encourage you to check it out. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate your viewership. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave me a like and subscribe if you're new. I want to personally thank Tyler and Rebecca for taking the time out of their day and allowing me to interview them about cattails. It was a lot of fun and it was an honor to talk to them. They're very lovely people and I think you should watch our interview. It was a lot of fun to do. You should also follow them on Twitter at Cattails Game, Falcon Development, and Becker Ruth 11. Um, also to check out HerOwnGame.com, Becca's blog on her progress to making her own video game. It's a really good read. It totally resonated with me. And I encourage you to check it out. Links in the description. And I want to thank you again for sticking around to the end. I hope that you have a wonderful day and that 2021 will be a much better year for everybody. Till next time, stay safe and take care.